In this video, we apply advanced settings to conditional access policies that fine tune AVD access. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. This is a follow up to a previous video on creating conditional access policies for AVD. In that video, we created a policy to enforce multi-factor authentication for users accessing AVD. Coming up, we put advanced controls in place to shape parameters around AVD access. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. That helps grow this channel and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, and Windows 365 with Intune Management at udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you channel members for your support. It is greatly appreciated. Back to it, we're gonna build on the previous conditional access video by putting more controls in the existing policy that go beyond simply enforcing MFA. Then we create a new policy that blocks access to AVD for specific conditions. And by the way, these concepts can be put in place for other applications and enter ID as well. The goal of this video is to demonstrate a few examples of how we can add fine grain controls to conditional access policies beyond just enforcing MFA. The specific examples may not directly apply to your environment, but once you understand how they work, they can be modified to fit your organization's needs. Coming up, we add hybrid enter ID joined clients to the policy as an alternative to MFA. Then we add conditions that change the MFA requirements depending on the public IP address the user's logging in from. After that, we create a blocking policy that prevents users from logging in with specific clients. Then we block access from outside the country. Chapter markers are in the descriptions if you wanna jump ahead. Let's go to the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. Coming up, we're going to allow logins from hybrid join devices as an alternative to MFA. We'll start by going to conditional access and then to our policy. This is the MFA policy created in a previous video. You can make a new one if needed. We've selected our users. That's the group of users who are logging into AVD for the target resource. We've selected the Azure Virtual Desktop application. Under conditions for client apps, we've included the web browser, mobile apps, and desktop client. For grant, we've selected require multi-factor authentication. This policy will apply to the AVD users when they try to access the Azure Virtual Desktop enterprise application. That represents the gateway service in Azure Virtual Desktop. Under grant, we're granting access and requiring multi-factor authentication. But the theory behind this is if somebody's logging in with a hybrid join device, they don't need to use multi-factor authentication. In essence, the hybrid join device is another factor. It's something they have. So let's select the option, require Microsoft Entra hybrid join device. We get a warning. We're only applying this policy to AVD access, but you could imagine what would happen if this was accidentally set to require hybrid join devices for all Azure and Enter ID access. And hypothetically, if there were no hybrid join devices configured in the environment, it's possible to lock everyone out, including admins. That's low risk for this policy, but keep that in mind when using conditional access. Take a look at my video on emergency access accounts for steps to create break glass accounts to prevent getting locked out. A link to that is on the screen. Okay, back to it. If we scroll down to the bottom, when there's multiple controls, we can require all selected controls or require one of the selected controls. We'll leave it set to require one of the selected controls. The way this is configured, users who log in from a hybrid join device won't get the MFA prompt. Users who log in from other devices will get the MFA prompt. If we switched it to require all the selected controls, the users would have to be on a hybrid join device and they'd have to successfully respond to an MFA prompt. Let's click select and save. Let's run what if. We'll select our user. We'll select our application. In this case, it's Azure Virtual Desktop. And we'll run what if. 
It shows the user will require MFA or a domain join device. You can test logging in if you'd like. I did, and as expected, a non-domain join client required MFA, while a hybrid join device did not require MFA. As a side note, this worked as expected with the Windows AVD client and the Edge browser, but not Chrome. Chrome and other third-party browsers can't pass along the device ID, and because of that, Enter ID cannot recognize the session as coming from a hybrid join device. Next, we're going to exclude a location from the MFA policy. Here's the scenario that this may apply to. Let's say an organization has a few locations. The location is secure, so only authorized people enter the buildings. They also have to authenticate to their computer to log in. We can create a condition that excludes anyone accessing AVD from a known public IP address. The logic is, if we know only employees will access the internet from these secure locations, why are we making them use MFA to access AVD or other Enter ID resources? The argument against this is what if someone accesses the network from outside the building? How secure is the Wi-Fi? Or what if an appliance or an application on the network is hacked? How about guest Wi-Fi? Does that go through the same public IP as employee internet access? My personal opinion is that the hybrid joined MFA exclusion is more secure than an IP-based exclusion. But there are many ways to solve a problem, and for some, this may be a good option for the environment they're in. Anyway, from conditional access, go to named locations. And as a side note, there's a link here to configure multi-factor authentication trusted IPs. This is part of the legacy MFA configuration. It still works, but we're not going to use this. If you manage conditional access, you should know where to locate this, especially if it has IP addresses configured. We'll go back to name locations. Click to add a new IP range location. We'll give it a name, allowed IP addresses for this example. You can mark this as trusted. That helps enter ID in risk calculations. We can also use trusted locations in the conditional access policy. We'll add an IP range. We'll add the public IP address of this computer. You can use IP Chicken or some other website to identify your external IP address. We'll add a slash 32 at the end. And I'm doing this for just one machine. If you're configuring this for a large organization with multiple blocks of IP addresses, you could add them in here. We'll just add and create. Let's refresh. And now I have my allowed IP addresses. Let's go to our policy. I'll open up the AVD MFA policy. We'll go to conditions and locations. We'll configure. With it set to any, there's no real change in the policy. Before the policy wasn't looking at location and now it's using the condition any location. Let's go to exclude. There's the option to exclude all trusted locations. That would include any location where that include in trusted locations checkbox was selected. For this example, we're going to select a location and we'll select the allowed IP addresses location. The multi-factor authentication trusted IPs is the legacy setting I showed earlier. Let's select and save. Now our known trusted IP addresses are excluded from the policy. Let's go to what if. And here again, we'll select the user and the app. Now, if we select what if, it's going to require multi-factor authentication or require a domain join device. Let's scroll back up. And this time we're gonna enter in the IP address. That's our known location IP address. And we'll select the country. You have to add that. And now if we go, what if? No policies apply. That's because we excluded that IP address from the policy. That means if somebody's logging into AVD from that IP address, it doesn't require MFA or a hybrid join device. And again, like before, you can go ahead and test this if you're running through it yourself. I've tested these already and don't see a reason to show the login screen again for each one of these tests. Next, we're going to limit access by device type. For this example, we want to block access for mobile, Android, and iOS devices. To do that, we have to start by creating a new policy. 
The one we were previously working on grants access based on conditions. We want this policy to block access based on conditions. For example, let's go into our existing policy. End conditions. And view device platforms. We can include or exclude devices. But that just means we can limit the scope of the policy to specific device types or we exclude device types from the policy. The policy still grants access. If we exclude the device types, that means users accessing AVD with the excluded devices won't have the policy applied and therefore won't require MFA. We need to create a new policy that will block access. Let's go back to policies. We'll add a new policy. We'll give it a name, AVD block policy for this example. Go to users and we'll select our users. and our target resource. We'll select an app, search for Azure Virtual Desktop. The application ID ends in 8D07. We'll select that. Once that's selected, go to Conditions and select Device Platforms, Not Configured, and we'll select Yes to Configure. We could select the devices we want to include, so this block policy would include these devices and in effect block the devices, or we could exclude the devices that we do want to allow access and thereby blocking anything that isn't in the excluded list. Let's go back to include. We'll select Android and iOS. We'll click done and go to grant. And now under grant, we'll select block access. Now any of our selected users going to the Azure Virtual Desktop app where it meets the condition of iOS or Android will be blocked. We can do report only. I'm going to turn this on and create. In production, you would want to set the report only for a while before turning on. That way you can see what's really happening before it's applied to the users. Let's go to what if. Here again, we'll select our users and app. And if we run what if, we get both. Well, that's kind of confusing, but you know what? We didn't specify the device type. So let's go up to here to platform. And if we select Windows, what if? Now we just have the AVD MFA policy. And now if we select Android, it shows the block policy. And remember, the most restrictive will apply. If we wanted to, we could go back to the AVD MFA policy and set the device type to just the devices that aren't in the block policy. Next up, we're going to block access from outside of a country. The reason for this is fairly simple. We reduce risk by only allowing access from within the countries the company is located in. We're going to view how to block access from outside a country, the USA for this example. And so I don't give a false sense of security, Blocking by country can be circumvented with an international VPN or, for example, deploying an Azure VM in a region in that country. There are ways around this, but it will prevent some of the more opportunistic attack types. Another reason for this is if we don't want legitimate logins from outside the country, for example, stopping employees that work with sensitive data from logging in outside the country while on holiday. Start by going back to conditional access policies and name locations. And from here, we'll add a country location. We'll give it a name, USA location for this example. And of course, you can change that to whatever country you need. We have the option to set the location by IP address or GPS. We'll leave it to IP address. Let's search for United States. And we'll select that. Let's refresh. Next, let's go to our blocking policy. AVD block policy. Go to conditions. Then locations. We'll set configure to yes. With the configuration on the screen, we have the risk that any one of our AVD users accessing the Azure Virtual Desktop application from any location will get blocked. But we do want people logging in from the US to be allowed. So let's go to exclusions. Here again, we can select all trusted locations. 
but we'll select locations and then select our USA location. That condition excludes USA from the block policy. Now the problem we have is that the device platform rule specifies Android or iOS devices. So the conditions are Android and iOS devices signing in from anywhere other than the US will get blocked. If we want this rule to apply to all clients, we need to disable device platforms. What if you want both? Disable all access from Android and iOS devices and stop logins from any clients outside the US. That would require two rules with different conditions. Once the device platform is disabled, click Done and save. We can go to what if again, select a user and the Azure Virtual Desktop app. Set the IP address and the country to United States. And then what if? And no policy is shown. So why is that? Well, if you're following along, a couple steps ago, we configured the require MFA policy to exclude logins from our public IP address. And that's the public IP address I added. But if we change this to another country and run what if again, now because we changed the country to outside of the US, the block policy applied. That is four examples of how to use conditional access policies to control access to Azure Virtual Desktop. That's how to add advanced conditions to conditional access policies that fine tune how users access AVD. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.